visit some friends for repairs. Of course you do. This f***ing series has more side quests than Red Dead Redemption 2. This asset was of extreme importance to me. This was actually an outtake from the end of the Jack Reacher movie. Skip. Also, Discount Jeremy makes a pop culture reference that isn't a sin of the episode cliche. These previously on segments at the beginning of each episode are getting so long that at some point they're going to be 40% of the actual show. Discount Jeremy hates previously on segments cliche. Did you get the wire out? Sure, this is f***ing adorable, but show spends far too much time on this gag. Discount Jeremy sends something he likes cliche. Holy shit, we're four sins into this thing and three of them have been cliches. Keep them coming. Not only does Baby Yoda survive this, he comes out completely unscathed. Sinning the fact that a baby survived something. Fucked up, that is. Oh great, it's a remake of that racist Bruce Willis movie from 1998. Just what I expected as a detour on the way to get Yodes back to his Jedi brethren. Discount Jeremy makes a pop culture reference. You know what, you get the point. Did Mando even call ahead to tell them he was coming? Or did they just sense a disturbance in the Force or some bullshit? Or, and hear me out, cause this is gonna blow some minds, maybe they saw his ship as it was coming in, and that's why they're walking out to meet him. I'll get my best people on it. And luckily they happen to be sitting right over there! Yeah, let's see. Why would his two best mechanics be stationed at a landing zone? Any reasons? Any at all? But over on this side is the problem. It's an old Imperial base. And this never came up in conversation between Mando and his other mandolins during the entire first season? And why would it? They weren't planning on infiltrating the base back then, so a random line of dialogue explaining the location of the base would not have made sense. Mando, I just want them off my planet. But how does destroying the base guarantee that? If anything, it might make the Fallen Empire target their sights even more on Navarro. Looks like they're not even really bothering Grief and company in the town. Based on this and the events from the Marshal, these towns don't seem to know who their enemy is, and who's just a nuisance they should learn to live with. Dude, the Empire is an oppressive government that abuses its citizens, and you're asking why the people of Navarro can't just learn to live with them? The whole base is powered by a reactor. Having an understandable conversation in a normal voice while speeding down the ravine in a convertible. But the audio from this scene proves that you can have this conversation, because the speeder really isn't that loud. Sure, Mando helps swing things a bit in their favor, but surely there's one or two people in town that could be just as helpful. Just as helpful as a badass Mandalorian in Beskar armor? Yeah, good luck finding that guy. Oh man, if they screw up this heating core, the Bullrog is gonna be pissed. Discount Jeremy makes a pop culture reference that, you know what, fuck it. Pew pew pew! Pew pew! <laughs> Discount Jeremy hates action scenes. <laughs> this fake ass laugh. What do you have for me? The device has been planted as you requested. So did they just have this guy planted on Navarro just on the off chance Mando would come to have his ship repaired? Holy shit, you're dumb. Are you really questioning why they would plant a spy on a planet where the person they're looking for has a group of friends? Seriously? 